Welcome to another edition of Flying Squirrels Insider. In for Anthony Opperman, I am John Laser. I think a broader statement of Chris Hessen's success is where we are in the game of baseball. People value the radar gun so much and lighting that up and having that electricity, and they devalue the ability to pitch and really baffle hitters and confuse them. And that's what Chris Heston does. He's outthinking people with better stuff than people thought that he had. Wes, we just saw a piece on Tommy Joseph, and of course he's in a position that you were a couple of years ago, very young, highly touted prospect in this system. You've got the weight of the world on his shoulders, and I know you've had that in your career, certainly now a little more of a veteran in this clubhouse. Definitely not old, I'm not going to call you that here on the <laughs> set, but definitely not 20 years old either. How do you make that adjustment from being viewed that way to being looked at the way you are now? I think the future is very bright for this ball club. I don't think there's any team that's going to run away, because also what happens with those veteran-laden ball clubs, you need guys to fill at upper levels and generally they don't stay there the entire season and also they slow a little bit as some of that youth gets that experience and is able to exploit the reasons why they're older guys and they're at the double-a level so things will even out I look for this to be a three or four team race come July August and on into the first week of September number two one Perez. I've actually heard him. He mimics you on the bus <laughs> How as he, he introduces do? himself. This isn't quite as good, but it, it's close to as good. Speaking of, it was a bold move on our behalf to bring a guy on. We've never had you on the radio broadcast, by the way, and that's not changing because that was one thing I learned in <laughs> broadcasting school was you never bring a guy onto your airwaves that has a better voice than you. Well, we're losing that battle, and now as people know, he's also a more attractive individual than Anthony and I. I don't know if I've ever seen a squirrel surge like this so quickly, so impressively. And because of his speed, he makes things happen once he reaches the bases. You know what that surge started actually, not coincidentally? It started the day that he appeared with us here on ah, Flying Squirrels Insider. I you think I'm joking, but I'm not. Well, I was I actually have. came in here and I got him right. No, you're right. He made some big adjustments with Ken Joyce in the batting cage and he has been on a tear as the squirrels have been going into the all-star break. They win seven of nine games, John, including taking a series from first place Akron. Then they sweep second place Redding out of the Eastern Division going into that break. I introduced you there how pretty much everybody has since the latest rankings came out from Baseball America as the Giants' top prospect. There's a stigma that comes with that and some pressures too, I might imagine. How have you dealt with those pressures? It's very rare, as I was saying, to come up here and dominate the Eastern League right off the bat because you have so many things going against you. You don't have a familiarity with a lot of the pitchers, a lot of these guys playing in bad environments weather-wise for the first time in their career. So you don't necessarily expect a guy to light the world on fire at the beginning, which I think is why the last couple of weeks have been very encouraging. You can definitely see advancement and progression at the plate from Tommy Joseph, most noteworthy. But over the last few days, Gary Brown's gotten it going at the top of the order and so much affected in that flying squirrels off offensive approach with what Brown does or doesn't do. Adrianza comfortable in the field from the outset and seemingly swinging the bat very well from the right side of the plate beginning the season and now starting to get it going a little bit on the left and his on base percentage rising as his selection process has gotten better. All right, Tommy. Now a couple of keys to hitting the ball soft. See right there. Handle shot stings a bit, but your average will thank you. A little rope a dope tactic. Get a little bend going. Yeah, we call that one the Texas two-step. Filet mignon. That's the Mexican hat dance. There are some quality arms in the bullpen. Brett Bochy's having a fantastic season. Daryl madey has been that veteran presence. And we've seen the emergence of Tom Vasella, not only in his acting roles and his directing roles here on Flying Squirrels Insider, but on the mound. He's having an awesome campaign as well. But it is the starting pitching that leads this ball club. We knew that going into the season that it was going to be. We didn't know that it was going to be this good. Mike Kickham on an absolute roll right now, including seven no-hit innings earlier this week against the Harrisburg Senators, one of the finest pitching performances as I've seen at the double-A level, and it came on the heels of another fine pitching performance that we saw on this level, and that's Mike Kickham actually arriving at the ballpark via chopper right now because that's the status that he has obtained. Chris Heston, though, making his last start here and looking a lot like the guy from the first half who was otherworldly and leading the Flying Squirrels seemingly to victory every five days. It's going to be a huge part of it. And don't forget, Justin Fitzgerald, the anchor of this starting rotation, has been spectacular since the All-Star break as well. I'm sitting right here in what is known as the broadcaster's seat. In just a second, we'll see why this bus is a little bit different than your standard coach bus. But one thing is always the same. You always have your slotting system for seats. They always remain unchanged unless the roster turns over. But that never happens for broadcasters. So here we are, third seat back on the right. The only way you can defer from that 
is if your third seat back on the left. It'll go manager, hitting coach, radio broadcaster on the right, pitching coach, athletic trainer, strength coach on the left. Chaos after that. As we take a look at Brett right here, you have to see what the newcomer has to endure out to the bullpen. And Justin, I want you to tell us a little bit about this bag and why you make Boach carry it. He's a good guy, I just don't see the rationale behind it. You guys maybe throw that split change differently. Just throw it right at the camera there and don't worry about breaking it. It's all on the house. Our thanks to right-hander Justin Fitzgerald, Squirrel starter, and Squirrel's right-hander closer Brett Bochy for being here. Really glad they could break down the split finger change and also Brett's relationship in Odd One with the Disney princesses. I'm taking the bag with me, however, because we're out of time on Flying Squirrels Insider for my broadcast partner, Anthony Opperman, our show producer, Craig Keaton, and our entire crew. My thanks for joining us on Flying Squirrels Insider. We'll see you again soon.